I'm Alexander Diaz Lopez, and I'm currently a professor at Villanova University. I think so. Um, certainly early on when I was in, in elementary school, math was was easy for me, I think it's is the word. I, I was never, I don't think I felt challenged enough. So it, it was not interesting. And then it wasn't until high school that that I, I was part of a math group in the school. And there we were doing, it was sort of like an after school group. And there I started seeing more challenging problems. And, and that's when I got hooked. So sort of like that, once it became harder and challenging, uh, that's when I got hooked with it and, 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 and really enjoyed it. It depends on what, what we mean by mathematician. Early on, when I, when I was in high school, I, I knew that I wanted to teach mathematics because I enjoyed, so like I enjoyed engaging with this more harder problems that we were seeing in this math club. And, and, and I really liked the teacher that was, that was running that. And I thought I could see myself doing this. So, so being a math teacher was sort of like the only thing I, I knew mathematicians will do. So when I went to college, I went to college sort of like thinking I'm, I'm gonna be a math teacher. And I started taking education courses and such. And then midway through my college career, I, I realized I had to do some projects in some schools. And, and I realized that, well, maybe that's not uh, what I enjoyed the most, maybe actually teaching at the university level uh, seemed more fun because I was enjoying my university courses. And at that point, um, I, I applied for a summer program, REU, I got accepted. And when, when I started doing research, I, I realized I liked this too. So midway through my college career, I thought, okay, I, I want to become a math professor. And, and so I think if you think of mathematicians, for me, a, math, a teacher is a mathematician. So, so maybe from early on, I knew I wanted. But if for other people, it's a, it's a researcher, then it was, it was like midway through my college career. I work with this collection of, of objects. So they're called Coxeter groups in mathematics. But what they are is imagine that you have uh, something like a bowl or a, or a hexagon or a square or so like or a cube if it's three dimensional. You can, you can take any object and start thinking about, hey, how can I move this object around? How can I move the object? Um, and, and so that when you put it back, it almost looks like it has the same shape. So if you have a cube, for instance, you can rotate it in one way, you can rotate it in another, several ways, you can flip it around. And, and all these rotations and flips uh, can actually tell you a lot of information about the object that you're studying. So if you didn't know to start that you had a cube or something else, uh, by studying, it's called the symmetries of the object. You might be able to say more about the about these objects. So from a, in, in a more technical term, this these are called reflection groups. Uh, they're, they're part of something called abstract algebra. So I work with these reflection groups that are typically called Coxeter groups. And what I study from them Lately, what I've been studying are combinatorial questions, which are questions uh, of the form, at least the ones that I study, how many of these are there, or how many, sort of like they have to do with counting and with studying the structure of, 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 of some problems that have to do with, with counting. So I, I, I combine these two ideas from algebra and, and combinatorics. So I, I like to say that I'm an algebraized combinatorics, but particularly working on, on Coxeter groups. So I was born and raised in Puerto Rico, and I did my undergrad at the University of Puerto Rico in Maya West, which is sort of like on the, on the western part of the island. And then I moved for my PhD, I moved to North Indiana, to the University of, to Notre Dame, University of Notre Dame. And um, when I moved there, culturally, it was a big shock. I had lived my whole life in, in the Caribbean, in Puerto Rico, um, and, and moving to North Indiana was, was a big shock in several aspects. I was also living by myself. I was sort of like starting grad school. So the academics and, the, and that early first semester was, was very tough. I remember I, I will be working all week and I'll be tired and it will be super cold. And I'll be like, I don't, you know, I don't want to do anything. It's uh, so it, th yeah, that initial semester was rough. And then I realized that I needed to, to take care of myself and and, and play sports and, and travel to see my family more and, and, and do other things. So I, I learned that self-care was, was extremely important. And that lesson has been helpful from that point on. I think that it has been easier as I moved along my career as a grad student and later as a faculty. But one of the big reasons is that I, I understood the importance of, of physically and mentally 
being okay and taking care of myself. So that first year at Notre Dame taught me that. Certainly one of them is, uh, was getting my PhD, particularly, so it was a personal goal. I wanted to become a, a math professor. So once I got my PhD and I started applying for jobs, which was a, a stressful time, but I, I sort of like knew that I was shooting towards my initial goal of becoming a faculty. But, but now reflecting more, getting a PhD has given me the, the platform to work on whatever projects I'm interested in. So it can be a research project. It can be a, sort of like other projects related to society, personal projects. But um, compared to friends that, that work at the, in different industries, one of the benefits that I, that I have from working in academia is that freedom to, to work on, on pretty much whatever I want. So, so that has been good. A second um, big accomplishment, which is a collection of them, is that I've been, I've been fortunate enough to meet amazing people and create several programs and initiatives. One of them is Latisms, which is Latinos and Hispanics in the Mathematical Sciences. It's a website that showcases the accomplishment of Latinos and Hispanics. Math Swagger is a, is a program that we're just running for the first time this summer. It's called Summer Workshop for Achieving Greater graduate educational ready, readiness. So that's where the swagger comes from. And it's for grad students. Um, we're gonna talk about a lot of, of, the, of the topics that are important when, when one is a grad student. Uh, I have co-founded Villanova Dreams Program, which is for Villanova students to learn about grad school. Villanova Co-Master Program, which is a research program that, that we have uh, developed at Villanova for students to work with faculty. So I've, I've, I've been part of, of, I think, great initiatives that help the students and the younger population. And that to me, it's, it's, has been a great accomplishment, seeing students go through it, um, take advantage of it, benefit from these initiatives. Um, it gives me a lot of joy. Yes, many. I, I, I'm very, very fortunate to have had a lot of supportive people in my career. It started with Frank Morgan, as when I was an undergrad, I, I applied to several RUs when I was going into my junior year and uh, got accepted only in one of them. And if I knew that the program was famous and big, I will have not applied. It's sort of funny because uh, when I applied, I applied to everything without knowing much and uh, I will have never applied. It was small. It's a summer program run by faculty at Williams College. And I applied particularly to the, to the group that was run by Frank Morgan. And um, he accepted me into the, into the summer program and it went well. And from that point on, he became a, a sort of like a, a mentor for me. He was a supportive, he was an advocate for me. It's the best word. And, and after that, I did another summer program going into my senior year, MSRI up. And I met Edre Goins, Ivelisse Rubio. They were both very supportive for me. My research advisor, Matthew Dyer, was extremely supportive. They, so they have, they've, been, they've been supportive people in my life. My collaborators, Eric Insko, Pamela Harris, Mohamed Omar, my colleague, Katie Haymaker, they have all been very supportive. So I, I, I feel very fortunate to have plenty of people. And there are tons that I have not named. Um, so if, if I name everyone, I think uh, we'll stay here for a while. But um, I, I, I do want to point out two role models that I that I watch closely, that I learn from a lot, and they are Francis Sue and Federico Ardila. So Francis, I, I really, I learn a lot from him. I, I, I learned, I, I admire his humility and how graceful he is with everyone that he meets. So, so I, it's someone that I, that I look up to and I, uh, and I learn a lot from. And from Federico Ardila, I admire his authenticity and, and that he, he works on the issues that are important to him and, and he's gonna work at them. And, and, and he has such a, such a nice way of including everyone and, and having a sense of community, creating a sense of community that I, I also admire him and, and learn from him often. I think the best, the best advice or words of wisdom I can give is to define, to, to don't let others define what success is for you purposefully think about what, what is success for you. What do you want to achieve? Some people might tell you in your life, you should be doing X, Y, or Z thing um, so that you can achieve X, Y, or Z. And, and I think that if you want to achieve that, then, then yes, that's a great advice. But if you don't want to, that's probably not a good advice. 
So don't don't let yourself don't let others define what what you want to do. For for some people, success in in mathematics is is to be an R1 faculty, and they work towards that. For others, is to be a teaching faculty and and sort of like teach as many students as you can. So if that's a success for you, push towards that. For others, is to work in industry. For others, is to do volunteering work, to write about mathematics for for the public, um, to 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 go back home and work with the people in your home country, to do all these sort of things that that can be success for you. And if you let others define what that is, you you might not be working towards your goal. So I think that's 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 the best advice I can give. Um, define success for yourself. And every single person, for every single person, it's different.